be so for real right now. If you are over the age of 30 and you are dating a teenager, you are a weirdo. I'm not going to sit here and argue or try to see it from your point of view. Like, that's just weirdo behavior because teenagers are kids and you are old. I can call you old. I'm 25. I'm halfway there and I already feel like someone's geriatric grandpa. The only thing I can count on my back for is to fail me in the times I need it most. But no, like all jokes aside, I am not kidding at all. That's just some weirdo behavior. And when you think about the fact that celebrities are already just pretty much a bunch of weirdos. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the Hollywood world is basically just celebrity age gap central. When did it become so out of fashion to date somebody your own age, I guess is my main question. So we're going to look at that today. I just want to talk a little bit about, um, I pulled three examples and a bonus example as well, but I really want to emphasize that this is all over the place. These are just three people that come to my mind first, I suppose. And I already know people are going to have like a lot of opinions about this one because this is a fairly opinionated take of mine, but I don't know. Just remember that obviously I'm not in anybody's relationship, so I can't really say what the details of it are, but that's not going to stop me from having opinions about it. Okay, so the first couple we're going to look at is less of a couple and more of an ongoing situation. Um, we're going to talk about none other than Leonardo DiCaprio. So despite being 48 years old, uh, people couldn't help but notice that the maximum age of Leonardo DiCaprio's Hollywood girlfriends tends to cap out right around 25. Like this chart has been going viral for years and they go back and update it every so often. It's a little hard to read, but don't worry. I'm going to go over the whole thing. So we have Leo over here, born in 1975. Great smile. And then we can see this legion of, um, dare I say, similar looking women that he has been involved with over the years. So for each woman, you can see that she's associated with a period of time in which she was dating Leonardo DiCaprio, right? And so starting off strong, um, he was already dating an 18 year old when he was 24, which is just Anyways, um, so despite the six-year age gap, you know, they, they kept it going strong until she turned 23, and then he moved on the very next year, which is fine, except for the fact that he moved on to a 20-year-old. So despite being 10 years older than her at the age of 30, they kept doing their thing until she turns 25. And then notice this, at age 25, she is then replaced... I shouldn't use the word replace. That's not very nice. Uh, he then moves on to a person who is 23 the very next year. And then the next year after that, he moves on to someone who's 22. And then he goes down to 20. Now, keep in mind that at this point, Leonardo DiCaprio is 38 years old. He has now reached the point where he is old enough to have totally been these women's father. Not weird at all, right? Anyway, um... I guess we have a slight improvement. Uh, she turns 21, so that lasted for more than a year. But then he just moves on to a 25-year-old. Now, here's the thing. You may be thinking, like, is the, the, the curse finally going to be broken now that he's starting off with a 25-year-old? Well, no. He moves on uh, to someone who is 24 and then to a different person who is 25. Uh, our man is 42 years old at this point. And this chart notices that, like, four of his partners sort of get capped off at 25 here. Anyway, he then moves on to this Camilla Marone lady who he has been with um, or he was with when she was 20 and then all the way up until when she was 25. And when he first started dating this lady, he was 23 years older than her, which is like, I guess the biggest age gap on this record. He's more than twice as old as her. And yeah, if you're wondering how this all ends, because this chart caps off right around 2022, you'll be happy to know that he is now in a relationship with a new 25 year old. So no, the curse has not been broken. Leonardo DiCaprio just can't stay away from these 25 year old models, even though he's literally going to be turning 50 soon. At this point, I can't help but wonder if he's going to start being old enough to be these women's grandfathers. Like in 20 years, is he still going to be dating 25 year olds? Because that's horrifying. Anyway, if you had to ask me like, why do I care? I, I mean, I didn't make this chart. This is somebody else putting in the work. But why do I think that this is bizarre in the first place? It's because 25 is sort of understood to be a cutoff point of sorts when your brain stops developing. Now, I do want to point out that it's a bit of a misconception. It's not like you turn 25 and then your brain just 
snaps into a fully finished state. According to Wexner Medical Center from the Ohio State University, it says right here, there is a wide range of variability between individuals regarding when the brain is fully developed. For some, that could be as early as age 18 or as late as age 30, but the average is around 25 years of age. So obviously this doesn't apply to all people uniformly, but that doesn't change the fact that if you go back to this chart, the majority of these women, they're not even done. The majority of these women have not even reached the point where that prefrontal cortex is done doing its darn thing. Meanwhile, Leonardo DiCaprio reached that point way back in, I don't know, 1999. It's just weird. Like, it's just weird, okay? And look, I'm sure Leo's a nice guy. Actually, I'm not sure of that at all. I think this is very very concerning but the worst thing is like he's become literally the poster child i think for dating women that are far younger than you in hollywood there's a quote down here from ricky gervais at the 2020 golden globes where he said once upon a time in hollywood is nearly three hours long leonardo dicaprio attended the premiere and by the end his date was too old for him like bruh is that really what you're trying to be known for anyway moving on to our second example um i would like to talk a bit about beyonce and jay-z beyonce is 42, Jay-Z is 53. So here's the thing. I'm bringing them up for a specific reason. 42 years old, obviously, is like totally old enough to make your own decisions and stuff. But what makes these celebrity age gap relationships or just these age gap relationships weird in general is it's always the time that they met. That's always the crucial detail that really just makes this whole thing seem a bit screwy. So way back when Beyonce was on the cover of Seventeen magazine, and in this interview, she said, I was 18 when we first met, 19 when we first started dating. That means he was already 29 or 30 when he met this 18 year old, and then he very quickly went on to start dating her. This is something that Beyonce has confirmed multiple times. Like here she is in another interview later saying, we were friends first for a year and a half before we went on any dates, Beyonce explains. We were on the phone for a year and a half, and that foundation is so important for a relationship. And it's just like, it's kind of sad because what she's describing does sound very nice, and I'm sure it is from her perspective. But dude, that's so weird. Like, you as a 30 year old are talking to this kid for a year and a half before you start dating. What were you talking about for that year and a half? Why, 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 why are you even entertaining this thought? I guess is what I want to know. And you know what one of the craziest things is? Beyonce's image is so locked down on the internet. I noticed that anytime anyone has kind of anything to say about her, I guess that's not purely uh, like praise Beyonce, Queen B, God of everything. It kind of tends to disappear. And look, both things that I showed you are actually no longer online. So this 17 article, look at that. It says, let's not go there. The link is either outdated, inaccurate, or the server is not having it today. And the interview with Oprah, um, it just redirects somewhere else because I don't believe that that works anymore. So somebody has made sure that the actual details surrounding the date that they met uh, just magically got scrubbed from the internet. Now, of course, I was still able to show them to you because you literally cannot delete things on the internet, but like, come on, bruh, it's weird. Also, the fact that he cheated on her is crazy, low key, cause like, bruh, I, how, how did, what? <laughs> anyway, I think it should be pretty clear that I'm not saying this specific thing makes Beyonce a bad person. Obviously, my criticism would be for Jay-Z cause that's just some weirdo behavior through and through. A lot of people are like, don't infantilize, you know, women. You're, you're, you're infantilizing women when you say that they're not allowed to make choices about who they date, even if they're 18. And I'm like, listen, because I need to make this clear as day to you. I'm infantilizing everybody. I don't care if you are a man or a woman. It doesn't doesn't matter if you're neither. If you are basically even a day younger than me, you're a baby. That has been my philosophy ever since I reached a certain age. At the age of 25, I feel like people, even people who are 20, I feel like they're so darn young. <laughs> and I'm not saying that everybody needs to have my exact opinion because obviously that's not going to be the case. But when we're talking about literal teenagers here, I'm sorry, but you're just a kid. You may be 18 years old. You may be 19 years old, but you are a kid. And I promise you this, everybody who is over a certain age 
knows that. Deep down, they know that. Jay-Z, with his weird self, he knows that this was just a girl he was talking to. That there was still years before you actually sort of finish, well, you never really finish turning into yourself, but there's just so much growth that happens between you being 18, 19, 20, and even just a few short years later. Yes, I am the same person that I was when I was 18 years old, but let me know if you can relate to this. I feel like I was only like 25% myself when I was 18. I feel like the foundation was there, but that was about it. Even at age 20, yeah, I was an adult, fully grown man responsible for my decisions, but I had only been an adult for two years. What am I truly supposed to know about myself and my place in this world? I don't have anything figured out at that point. Now that I am older, now that I am 25, I feel a lot more, I guess, just confident and secure. And I feel like when I know things about myself, I actually know them. They feel like my real thoughts and not like the outside influence of me succumbing to peer pressure or even worse, succumbing to the desire to please people who are older than me. But yeah, I guess that's just my opinion on the infantilization thing. It's like, this is not exclusive to women for me, at least the way I'm thinking about it. And that actually brings up our next uh, couple in which the problem here would be the woman in the scenario. So this is Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, on the right and Sam Taylor Johnson on the left here. So Aaron is 33 years old and Sam is 56. So yeah, there's a 23 year age difference here. And I just, I want you to do a thought exercise with me. If you are 23 or even close to that age range, imagine that tomorrow a baby is born. Like just the very next day, someone has a kid. Uh, they, they are zero years old, zero days, zero seconds, right? Imagine later at some point in your life, you go on to enter a romantic relationship with that person who was born tomorrow. Does that seem right to you? Is that not weird? <laughs> but again, but again, it's not just the fact that she is literally old enough to be his mother. It's also the fact that they met when he was a kid. So they met on a film set when Aaron was 18 years old. They met in 2008. Here he is in 2008, posed with a person old enough to literally be his mother. Sorry, I'll never get over that. <laughs> and I just wanna bring it up again. This is a kid. He was 18 at that time. That's a kid, end of story. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've tried to be really, I guess like, agile when it comes to my opinions. I really try to make sure I'm hearing outside, you know, sources and always adapting to make sure my opinion reflects not just my preconceived notions, but other people's experiences. But this is gross and I really don't want to hear anything else. I'm sorry. I'm kind of just stuck there. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. If you have a problem with it, I'm going to need you to explain it to me in great detail so I can try to wrap my head around where you're coming from. Anyway, what doesn't help is that they, as a couple, are just really, uh, like the cringe is palpable, dude. They did this whole Harper's Bazaar puff piece on their relationship a few years ago, and it is just so weird, my guy. Like, besides the fact that this, this entire photo shoot was just conducted and then shared against my will, there's just some things in here that are really, really not cool. So they're talking about them meeting when he was an 18 year old, and um, he says, I remember it very, very clearly. I know what she was wearing, this white shirt that she still has that I love. It definitely changed my life, though not in the way I expected. She says, we were very professional through the entire film. And he says, no funny business at all. And the fact that you are even in a relationship with someone where you have to constantly reassure people, like, uh, I promise it was like, it wasn't that weird, guys. We weren't hooking up when he was a teenager, guys. I swear, it was later when, when he was in his early 20s and I was like 40 something. <laughs> anyway, so she says, everyone on set knew and as soon as we finished, he told me he was going to marry me. We had never been on a date or even kissed. And listen, I need y'all to think back with me. Do you remember being a teenager and thinking that you were gonna marry somebody, but then you get older and you realize like, oh, wait a second, that was a crush and I was just dumb. <laughs> Please do not make fun of me. I'm really about to get a little personal here. Um, but when I was 15 years old, I do distinctly remember telling multiple people <laughs> that I was going to marry uh, Taylor Swift. Now, please keep in mind here that I I was a child 
and I think she was like 23. Obviously, me saying this wasn't based on reality because I was just a dumb kid, and it wasn't based on any sort of romance. I was just like, wow, Taylor Swift is one of the most powerful people in the world. People hate her for existing, and she makes a lot of money. That's awesome. <laughs> My reasoning was very strange. I think my idea was like, I was going to become famous and then Taylor Swift and I were gonna become a power couple. Even like just saying this back right now is so stupid. But I was a child. And Taylor, if you're watching this, you're awesome, but I'm not interested. Sorry, I know, I know you're really broken up about it. But I bring up this incredibly strange story to say that this woman is describing a childhood crush that he had on her. It, like, they met each other, and as soon as they're done filming, he tells her that he's going to marry her, and they've never even been on a date or kissed. He doesn't even really know her at that point, outside of a work context, and he's 18 years old. For you to be 40 and know that that is just a very childish part of somebody speaking to you in that moment, and to still take advantage of that and leverage that into an entire relationship, is just nasty, bruh. Now, I do want to wrap this up with sort of a bonus couple here and say that my problem, I really hope it's clear, isn't with the age differences, it's with the maturity and the mindset difference. And so I bring up George and Amal Clooney because they actually have a fairly substantial age difference. My man's 62. I definitely hope I can look like that at age 62, we'll see. And uh, she is 45. So while he is 17 years older than her, which is like a lot to be fair, they met in 2013 when she was 35. She was 35 years old. So at the big age of 35, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I, I don't care, actually. I really don't care about this at all in terms of it being like problematic. I don't think it is because they're adults. What two actual adults choose to do like between themselves consensually and who they love has nothing to do with me or my opinions at all. I also just kind of happen to think that George and Amal Clooney are low-key awesome like he has his own george clooney money she has her own money as well because she was already like a hot shot lawyer and like they just seem really happy they just seem really cool he they just like let each other shine neither of them seems like they have to be the star of the show obviously once again i'm not in this relationship so i don't know they could hate each other but I choose to believe that they're as happy as they look in this picture. I mean, look at this darn picture. So yeah, I really want to reiterate, consenting adults with an age difference, not my problem. And why? whereas we can sit here and say that like, oh, well, you're an adult when you're 18. Uh, that's not really what I'm referring to. And even talking about Leo and his God only knows how many girlfriends. These are all 20 somethings in your early 20s and you are like 40. You are old enough to be their father. You know that the brain thing hasn't finished doing the brain thing and you're still doing that. Anyway, like I said before, I know that this is a very opinionated video, but what is the internet for if not for people to randomly share opinions? And so speaking of that, I would very, very much like to know what your take on all of this is. Are there any other weird age gaps that I missed that you think are kind of extreme? Do you disagree with any of my assessments? If so, I would like to know why. But yeah, at the end of the day, this was more just like a talking video. Obviously, we don't have any input in these people's real lives and this kind of doesn't matter at all. But once again, that doesn't mean I don't have strong feelings. Also, Taylor Swift, if you are watching this video, I thought that your Evermore and Folklore albums were awesome. And I would like for you to do more of that if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, that's all.